conferences and he's going to enlighten us about a very important topic nowadays with childhood obesity, the word epidemic. Uh, thank you, Professor Fawaz. Thank you, Professor Mariam, uh, my chairpersons. Uh, my uh, congratulations for the success of this event to Dr. Fahd and his team of Al Jahra, uh, who allowed me to be with you today. Uh, I will speak about obesity in 20 minutes, and this is a very challenging situation. Uh, and I have a story, and it is personal to start with. Uh, 1999, uh, my second boy uh, was born, and he was refusing to eat, and I gave my wife the advice, just focus on some proteins because these are the building units to build his body. He is under uh, weight, he is, uh, was born 2.2 kilograms, and he got, after the age of five years, morbid obesity. And by that time, it was introduced the concept of high protein that stimulates the obesity later in life and it is now wide world spread that we shouldn't push more proteins and this is harmful and because our thinking at that time was that carbohydrates are the only incriminated zone not the proteins so i have special interest in obesity we will have our agenda, so let us go for the uh, childhood obesity by CDC that increased uh, 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 tremendously, mostly twice or three times in the last 30 years. <coughs> uh, and the American Academy of Ch Children and uh, Adolescent Psychiatry stated that some reasons are family history, lack of exercise, and overeating. Worldwide, 2004, there were 22 million children having obesity, and I think it's now uh, uh, tripled. In some parts of Africa, Africa, with its malnutrition, obesity supersedes the malnutrition. If we are going to define it, obesity by terminology, it should be excess fat. However, we don't have a way to say that fat is more. So we depend on some other parameters like weight for length in younger and body mass index. If it is above 85th centile for infants or more, this is overweight. If it's exceeded 95th centile, this is obese. And in older persons, whether adults, children, or adolescents, we can apply the uh, body mass index concept. Uh, and according to the CDC charts from the age of two years, between 85th and 94th centiles are diagnosed as overweight, and 95th or more is considered obese. And the CDC has its own charts for boys, and for girls, and I, I, I was interested why the color of blue for boys and the color of uh, uh, pink for uh, girls, it's a, a worldwide uh, uh, concept. I don't have an idea why. But keep in mind that body mass index is a screening tool. It does not reflect the health problems of our cases. And you may see one like that in the above, and one is trying to play, both are obese, but mostly the one below will not have the serious complications of obesity like the one above. It's not only the measurements, it is the clinical situation and assessment. In USA, they were worried about the rate of obesity, and they found a rising pattern of uh, occurrence of obesity from 70s to 2000s. Uh, and actually, it's not only in the United States, but in all countries it was rising. 
obesity is getting uh, an epidemic pattern. What's going wrong? <coughs> the obese persons at high risk of diabetes mellitus, insulin resistance, cardiovascular diseases, all these are true evidence-based. Overweight children will mostly turn into overweight or obese adults. Obstructive sleep apnea, gastroesophageal reflux disease, impaired balance and joint problems and easy trauma, social isolation, low self-esteem and depression. Do you know that even in employment, they look at the shape and obese persons are having less chance of being employed. So they get more and more depressed. Some are related to the uh, reproductive cycle because m some of them will have polycystic ovarian disease. <laughs> Relation to asthma is now is building. Actually, sometimes we give you the causes, a very big list of causes of obesity. They are not causes. They are risk factors. Because the cause is well known. It is imbalance between the intake and requirements. If intake is more than requirements, actually this energy will be deposited. However, you call it risk factors, you call it causes, call it as you want. It may be genetics. Obese families usually get uh, uh, obese children. Some syndromes are described with obesity, but they are very uncommon. Endocrinal causes, but the most important that led to this epidemic was the change of the lifestyle. To give me oversize, modern technology, caregiver, this parent who is obese, playing with this game, carrying this infant, mostly this infant will turn to be the same style. Dramatic changes happen to our children. They are going to their schools in the school bus, not walking, not riding. They are getting this escalator rather than getting the stairs. They, mother and uh, father are in the work, he's alone having this big size food in front of the television, playing with beers with the new technology and this picture is no more present. Portion size, this is the market influence. It's getting more larger. Machines are available so that you, why, why, with one button you can get your, what you want. Healthy concept, or healthy weight concept is not there. In early life, genetic factors cannot be rolled out but actually, they are not causing obesity. They are predisposing the child for obesity. So if we avoided the non-genetic factors, we may help. For example, maternal nutrition and overfed mothers, those who achieved higher weight during a pregnancy, will get obese infants. Smoker mothers, again, it's expectations, because the smoking may decrease the placental flow but we understood this. They are going to get small for gestational age in whom insulin release and insulin-like factor, growth factor release will be overboring and later obesity will happen. Diabetes mellitus, diabetic mothers will get larger babies. Newborn and infancy rapid growth and now what I met with my son shouldn't be met later, do not push a small for gestational age to rapid growth. Lifestyle changes, prevention of the national problem. On national basis and on individual basis. On national basis, uh, I found the report by a medical council to USA president. They felt it is a national catastrophe and it was a very rich report, and I hope every part of our countries are interested in 
is very exhaustive report. Go ahead, read it, adopt it. And they have different uh, problems. Girl and women care was underestimated. They advised it to be more. Antenatal care is advised to happen, improving early uh, eating habits, increasing physical activity, tobacco prevention, uh, uh, comprehensive multi-social approaches, and they put guidelines and they put 70 recommendations for the President of the United States of America, and most of it is now implemented and the rate of obesity started to decrease. <laughs> we should have three policies. Maternal incentives, and I am interested in women, and women can make things better. So, focus on mothers. Social norms, and these lead, need legalization to make it. Broader-minded environment. Revise the medical, it's, it's called solving the problem of childhood obesity within a generation. And their estimation is to reach by 2030 or 25, that level of 5% that was before at 70s. Treatment of individual case, eliminate the individual risk, this is number one. Increase physical activity by law. Encourage family activities, and when the exercise is done in a family context, it's better. And any physician who is interested in dietary manipulation of obesity knows that it is family problem rather than child problem. So if the child see you eating macaroni, rice, and these things, fast foods, and you are giving him this sauté, he will hate you and will not uh, uh, comply with. Other suggestions limit television time, and by fact, American Academy of Pediatrics to prevent television in the first year, and I know they are trying to raise it to the second year as well. Encourage love of books, libraries. This is one of the policies not only to read more and to be cultured more, but it was found that it decreased the electronic devices uses. Nutrition. Good food, not mere restriction. It's, our task is to decrease the intake, yes, but allow good food. So vegetables are better than carbohydrates, fats, and others. Taking the entire family to a farm in a journey. Toddler's energy need should be calculated. Your carbohydrate should represent 45 to 65% of the intake, and it should be of the whole grain type. Proteins, it should be in the range of one gram per kilo, but try to avoid fatty meat. Micronutrients should be uh, uh, guaranteed in the food you are giving. My lecture is allowed for uh, the audience, so that uh, the examples I gave for the foods that will supply this will be there. It's not wise to mention them one by one. So we have some example of vegetable and fruit group here. Grain, that should be whole grain, and uh, uh, how much of it should be given to the uh, toddler. Uh, milk and alternatives are mandatory. I know there are groups now against milk, but milk will still part of the nutritional pyramid that be, should be uh, given. <clears throat> Examples of the milk and its alternatives in amounts. Meat, uh, it's better to give it in the fish form rather than uh, 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 others. Poultry is better than uh, beef meat. <clears throat> we have meat alternatives. You can replace meat by eggs, by uh, beans, by peanut butter and others. Limit the wrong things and give it in a small amount. And we can collect the observations into ending obesity of childhood by weight management. This is important, but take care. 
when you are taking, uh, uh, decreasing the weight. In children, it should be one-third the rate of adults. It should be slower, not rapid weight uh, decrease. Promote intake of healthy foods, and this should be national. Impossible to limit these fast foods while in the media it's always present. So five Promote minutes. physical activity. Yes, this is the last. Uh, preconception and pregnancy care, early childhood diet and physical activity, health and nutrition. So we can wrap up. Prevent obesity and its prevention is better and easier than its treatment. National programs should be implemented. Treatment of individual cases is tailored for every case. Take care of the balance between decreasing the intake and decreasing the essential needs. Go ahead and take a course in infant nutrition so that you'll master the basics and manage it on a scientific basis. And thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mustafa. That was an excellent talk. I'm sure a lot of questions will arise. You've mentioned about the protein intake as 1.1 gram. I assume it's one gram per kilo. Is this for a specific age range? Because there is a WHO. Toddlers. What? It was for toddlers. Toddlers? Toddlers, yes. Like what age are you talking? Usually Infants, because uh, we speak about toddlers from the age of one to three. Yeah, but the, the, the WHO recommendation, um, I'm a metabolic uh, consultant, yes, so I deal with yes. a lot of protein-restricted diet. Yes. Um, toddlers needs about three grams per kilo per day to promote uh, uh, anabolism and keep them, you know, growing. And uh, because this will be at an expense of their growth if you limit it. Uh, there is the WHO safe level, but these are used for specific diseases, not for healthy children. So I, I'm a bit concerned about the fact that you've mentioned that it's 1.1 gram per kilo per day. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, actually, you are true when you are speaking about a normal person, but when we are speaking about uh, obesity and decreasing the weight, they are speaking about 1.1 gram protein per kilo per day because actually giving proteins with uh, leucine, isoleucine amino acids being released, uh, insulin will be released by these amino acids and insulin release will lead to hunger and hunger will deprive you from any other uh, controlling dietary controlling procedures. So if you are speaking about a normal person, we are speaking about a patient during a dietary uh, uh, elimination or dietary regimen to decrease his weight. These are recommended for decreasing the weight, not for a normal person to develop as normal. I think there is no conflict between the two ideas. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Mustafa. Uh, Sometimes it seems like a challenge in our outpatient clinic yes. uh, to treat obesity specifically. Yes. It's one of the hard issues. Yes. The patient will come, will give the dietary advice, will give the exercise advice, then follow up after six months and he's still obese. Yes. After one year, he's still obese. Okay, yes. this is frustrating for both the family and the doctor, right. despite of these advices. So yes. is there a specific um, advice from you what yes. to do if there is a resistance in the um, in the ideas first in the ideas of the parents or resistance in the compliance or resistance in I don't know or deficiency in us and yani give me the the best advice to deal with the obese patient in outpatient clinic yes thank you dr. Ahmed actually first thing I take care of I look at the parents if they are obese I will be very strict for them and advise an adult nutritionist to uh, combine work with me or to, to, to work together so that parents are treated as well, not only the child. This is number one advice. Otherwise, all your efforts will be lost. Number two, it needs some sort of uh, 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 not only being a doctor who is giving the advices. When you are dealing with this child as your son, I think you'll get him more, you can call him, you can keep in contact all through, not only leaving him for six months and coming after six months. What's your weight today? Just give it me, send an SMS with your new weight, send me an email describing your picture, give me a photo, uh, uh, and you can put it 
uh, incentives like uh, putting his uh, picture before and after in your clinic and uh, giving this for uh, 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 other uh, as a, a role model will encourage him to do this job. Uh, contact the school because uh, he is in a school may may have these fast foods and these high energy foods in the school. Uh, there should be a teamwork, collaborative, social uh, team, team working. This will succeed. Leaving him for your advices always fail. Thank you. Uh, Professor Mustafa. There is a question. Yeah, here. Yes, Sophie, uh, yes. Are there any uh, approved medication uh, for weight reduction yes. like an adult or any medication under trials for the children? Actually, the latest is not recommending any drug therapy medicinal therapy in treatment of childhood obesity, except if there is a pathology. For example, you know, some persons having this leptin deficiency, it may be one of the trials to try leptin administration, but these are very rare. We are not speaking about the commonplace. In the commonplace, medicines have no role. Even the surgery, if you mentioned the treatment, uh, because bariatric surgery is getting more common in these days, uh, they do not do the young age infants and the children. In uh, Egypt, they started doing those above the age of 15 years, although the recommendations were 25 years. However, they started to have these uh, different modalities of bariatric surgery for obesity uh, above the age of 15 years. The early results are very promising, especially sleeve gastrectomy. Sleeve gastrectomy, they take a sleeve of the stomach and decrease the size of the stomach. We are not aware what will happen, but uh, it, it succeeded in decreasing the weight adequately. Last question at the back. Yes, thank you. Actually, the guidelines are giving a list of investigations. In my practice, what I do, if he's an obese person coming from an obese family, usually this is simple obesity, familial obesity, and I do not ask for any investigations. And when is there is suspicion, one obese person coming in a lean uh, in, uh, parents, from lean parents, usually I uh, assess the thyroid functions, uh, the insulin status, uh, uh, and mostly these are uncommon situations, and actually it does not represent more than one to two percent of your practice. I know endocrinologists will say it's common, but when they are pediatricians, they know these endocrinal disorders relative to the simple obesity are not common, are not that common. But you, uh, when there is a hypertension, if you measure the blood pressure and it was high, go ahead and got uh, adrenal access assessment. If there is a sluggish activity, scholastic delay, get the thyroid uh, functions, uh, but not as routine because this will be exhaustive. Hello. Hello. Uh, can, you, can you give some light on uh, diet packages? What is the question? Diet packages. Diet. diet packages. So diet package, uh, that's programmed the nutrition yes, yes, to lose yes. weight uh, for yes. children with obesity. Okay, thank you. So uh, some packages are available, some programs are available so that you can uh, take one of them. Actually, uh, some of them like the Canada package is very helpful and working. And you can adopt, but it should be in an institutional form, not only on an individual basis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for this excellent presentation.